today is our final day in New Orleans and man I've got a story to tell on New Year's Eve December 31st of 1972 and then again on January the 7th of 1973 one man named Mark Essex his full name was Mark James Robert Essex opened fire on police officers today I'm gonna tell the story of the uh, American serial sniper he killed a total of nine people right here in New Orleans Louisiana over two days you're not gonna believe how this turned out episode today I'm down here in in an area that was completely devastated by Hurricane Katrina I mean at one time this was their jail it is abandoned but all of this is all police buildings this is their jail now they built it after Katrina but December 31st 1972 Mark Essex who was a Navy man he was a seaman he was part of the of the US Navy he targeted police officers and white people because he was spurred by racism that he had received while he was in the Navy and after he got out he was also at one time a Black Panther as I said this story takes place over two days but on the 31st Mark Essex pulled his car right here he got out of his car and he walked over to what was a parking lot right here at the time he set up his sniper rifle and aimed it across the street at what was a busy central lockup at the time using his rifle he fatally shot 19 year old cadet Alfred Harrell he wounded another, Lieutenant Horace Perez, in the attack. After shooting those two officers, at this time, this wasn't here. Interstate I-10 is just on the other side of this police building now. He was able to evade capture after shooting those two officers by running across I-10. And then he set off some firecrackers to help him evade arrest. Police catch caught back up with him on the other side of I-10. After he got on the other side of I-10, he broke into a building that no, is no longer standing. He set off the alarm just to alert the police. When the police got there, he again opened fire. He shot one of the officers in the back. He was a K-9 officer. They waited out for backup. But by the time backup got there and they went in, he had already escaped. One week later, on January the 7th of 1973, Essex would pop up again, shooting a grocer over by his home and then carjacking another man. He then drove into downtown New Orleans to this building right here. In 1973, this was a Howard Johnson's. He parked in the garage and then climbed the stairs from the garage. He kept having to go higher and higher because he kept finding that the doors were locked. All the doors from the garage, they were all locked. Each level he went up. Once he got up to the 18th floor, Essex immediately ran into three African-American employees of the Howard Johnsons at the time. I mean, he was completely armed. He had guns all over him. Uh, they were immediately frightened, but Essex told them, don't worry. He wasn't there to hurt any African-American people. He was only there to kill white people. Even still, those employees quickly notified authorities. 
He continued walking down the hallway he was on, up there on the top floor, when he encountered Dr. Robert Stiegel and his wife Betty. They were a couple who, they were on their honeymoon. They were in town on their honeymoon. He forced them into their room where he fatally shot Dr. Stiegel in the chest, and then he shot Dr. Stiegel's wife Betty in the back of her head. He took the telephone books out of their room and soaked them in lighter fluid laid them under the curtains right next to the window and set them on fire. He then dropped a pan-African flag on the floor beside the two dead bodies, I guess to let him know what he was fighting for. He then made his way down to the 11th floor. He blasted his way into several different rooms and set more fires inside the hotel. It was there he also shot and killed the hotel's assistant manager and the hotel's general manager, Walter Collins. The police and the fire department quickly arrived, swarming the road right out here in front of the hotel. They tried to use fire truck ladders pointed up onto the building to gain access, but they were shot at by Essex, who had made his way back up to the 18th floor and he started shooting down. And when he did, he fatally shot two New Orleans police officers and a photographer for the newspaper. This continued on for several hours where he would go on to shoot and kill several more people. A lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps, he was watching the TV coverage. This is the actual footage of the day Mark Essex tells New Orleans hostage from atop the downtown Howard Johnson Hotel an innocent victim shooting and killing nine, injuring more than 20. And he decided he had to help. So without even getting clearance, he took off in a CH-46 military helicopter to come and assist the police officers. He took on some armed police officers and then he took back off flying over the roof of the hotel. By that time, Essex had retreated to the roof. From that point, Essex and the men in the helicopter exchanged many rounds. Essex hid behind cover and then would pop out shooting at them. Uh, Essex eventually found cover in a concrete cubicle on the southeast corner of the roof up there. He stepped out to open fire at the helicopter again. The armed officers in the helicopter were able to open fire on Essex, fatally shooting him numerous times. Later on, it would be determined by autopsy that Essex had been shot more than 200 times, all of it unfolding on live TV. Essex wanting to get revenge on the white man for racism. He said that he endured racism throughout his entire time in the Navy. And then even after he got out of the Navy, he endured it some more. It actually sounds a lot like what's going on in the world right now today. But Essex, he took it above and beyond. He went out to kill. He went out with blood. He wanted vengeance, and he, he got it. He killed a lot of people, but it cost him his life as well. After the autopsy was done and all of the investigating was complete, Essex's body was flown back to his hometown of Emporia, Kansas. I'm not sure if they had services for him or if he was just laid to rest or what, but all of it unfolded 
right here. All those new the news coverage where they're all up on the roof. That was on top of this building right here behind me. It is now a Holiday Inn. It is no longer a Howard Johnson's. It's a Holiday Inn, but the building is still open. The building hasn't changed. It still looks exactly the same as it did in 1973. Well, well it has a clarinet painted over here on the side, and they changed the sign to show Holiday Inn instead of Howard Johnson's, but that's it. Well, that is it for the story of Mark Essex and our time in New Orleans. We are leaving right now, getting in the car. I'm getting on I-10 and we are headed back to off. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys just don't know how much. This has been a fun trip, getting to see New Orleans. I've never seen it before, so it was amazing. If you're new here, click that subscribe button and take it a step further and hit that bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any videos that I upload because you never know if, if, whether it'll be from home, what kind of story it'll be, or whether I'll hit the road. This trip was spontaneous you, and it, th these kind of trips happen all the time. If you want to help support the channel, check out the links down in the description box below. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow or the day after. Uh, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great day. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Love you all.